Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Superpower User. My name is Stanley and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the insides of this 480 millimeter alpha cool radiator by cutting it up into little pieces and taking a look at the insides, what it looks like, and taking a look at how well the Mayhem Splits Kit 1 and 2 or Part 1 and 2 has done to clean the inside of this radiator. So sit back, relax, and let's go. So this is actually a couple of years old now, and what I wanted to do was to reuse this radiator in the build. So I used Mayhem's Blitz Kit, uh, the cleaning kit, part one and two, and cleaned out the insides of this radiator. But when I actually went to install it, I did exactly what I told you guys not to do. And I mixed up my screws, the 30 millimeter screws versus the 35 millimeter screws, and ended up cracking the radiator. And when I started, filling in the water, the water came out basically at the corners here. So uh, much to my surprise, while I was filling it in, the, the water in, the water was basically dripping on the floor, total mess. So uh, I had to basically pull this radiator out and throw in a brand new radiator into my build. So I've got an extra radiator that I could do whatever I want to with because I really don't want to go through the trouble of trying to solder this thing to get it back into working condition. I've got all the radiators I need, so I thought, let's just take a look at one, how well this uh, Alpha Cool, or sorry, the Blitz Kit cleaned this radiator, and two, I've always wondered what exactly uh, the inside of this radiator looks like, you know, what kind of flow pattern. I've seen some pictures about the flow patterns and whatnot, but I just kind of want to see it firsthand. So what I'm going to be doing is cutting it into pieces and then maybe diagonally here and uh, you know, small pieces just so we can take a look. So let's get to the cutting. So that wasn't exactly what I expected. But then again, I never told you what I was expecting. So let's just pretend that that was all according to plan because I only managed to get two cuts out of this radiator, a uh, single cut right down the middle and then a 45 that you can see here. And the problem all stems from the choice of blade that I decided to go with. Since this was advertised as a all copper radiator, you know, hindsight's 2020, but I was thinking, oh, since it's all copper, all I need is a blade that can cut non-ferrous metals, meaning copper, aluminum, soft stuff. So I bought this blade. Little did I know, or like I said, hindsight's 2020, but 
This isn't all copper. Naturally, the outer shell here that you see here, this is definitely not copper. And if you actually take a closer look, this is actually pretty thick uh, steel. And it's a, it's a wonder that this blade actually managed to cut any of this at all, but um, it managed to get through half of this. And then when I was going through to my get my 45, it basically hit the other end, maybe all at once, and basically shredded the carbide teeth off of this blade. You can see here I'm missing chunks and pieces, and maybe a quarter of the carbide teeth are missing. So this blade, blade is complete toast, and I don't feel like buying another blade just to ruin it on this right here. So this is what we got. Truth to be told, this wasn't exactly what I was expecting to see on this inside of the radiator. And uh, this is another case of hindsight's 2020, where you know that water's flowing through these fins here, but somehow in my mind, I was thinking, well, the channels are something like a heat pipe or round and thick, but you know, when you look through these things, you can see clear through it. And that should mean that there aren't any thick heat pipes. So basically you can see here, if I can get the focus real quick here, the, these are the vertical channels. And these vertical channels are basically where all of the water flows through. And everything in between the vertical channels are the fins where it pulls the heat away from where the water flows. You have water that goes in one side and this is, these are sealed off. So this side right here is completely independent of this side right here. So when you fill water into one of the, the compartments here, it flows across all the way through through basically half of the radiator. And then it flows all the way to the end cap. The end cap, which I didn't manage to cut, but the end cap basically is a reservoir that basically connects all of the tubes here. It flows to the end here and then it flows all the way back to which basically are these tubes right here and it comes out here. So you basically do a U shape. So most traditional radiators are what's called a double pass radiator. So you've got a single pass that goes up and then a single pass that comes back. Now, there are different types of radiators such as a cross, cross flow radiator, which basically enters in one side and then flows across your all your fins and then exits on the other side. So that would be a single pass radiator. So now let's take another closer look at the fins and tubes. Uh, what we can see here is that these are the water tubes and the fins are basically uh, glued on to the tubes or, or very lightly soldered to the tubes. Now when I did the 45 degree cut across, these tubes basically fell out like accordions um, and just completely unraveled. So I've got a bunch of these tubes here and a bunch of these tubes and fins that basically uh, just completely fall apart. Now, it's interesting that the fins are only attached to one side of these tubes, um, and they just stack these tubes and fins right next to each other. Uh, and you can see they're really not glued together at all, except for the one side. So I thought that was interesting. When you completely peel back the support, it basically just completely opens up and uh, I guess they just solder in the end tubes uh, or the radiator at both ends and just kind of bunches everything together. One interesting thing that I noticed was that uh, when I originally purchased this radiator, when you turned it over or when you shook it, you could hear uh, basically metal shavings um, inside these, this radiator. And now that I've cut it open and basically uh, sh shook all out all the metal shavings. I guess the metal shavings were inside these tubes here and I bet a part of this stuff that's basically on the table here that part of it's from the cutting of or me cutting it but another part uh, is definitely from the metal shavings that's basically inside of the radiator and again I have four of these radiators. Two of these radi radiators had this metal uh, clinking sound too didn't. So clearly uh, not all of the radiators have that. Um, and it might've might been a bad batch, I don't know. But I guess we can definitively say that 
the clicking sound is really just the metal shavings or whatever stuck inside the radiator that never actually ended up leaving. Uh, even after running the loop for this many years, basically uh, the metal shavings just kind of stuck around inside the radiator. Now, I did want to touch upon uh, the topic of all copper radiator again. So, Alpha Cool makes really nice premium radiators that they claim as all copper. Now, what the all copper really means is that the water channels and the actual fins are made out of copper. There are uh, less expensive radiators out there that use aluminum. They've got the aluminum channels or aluminum fins or even some steel radiators, but the best type of radiators are these all copper radiators. Now, the reason why is because copper is a better heat conductor than aluminum or stainless steel. It's more expensive to manufacture just because the material is more expensive, but uh, you get a better heat thermal conductivity so you can release the heat out of the water much more easily. Uh, the last thing is that uh, whether or not the Mayhem Splits Kit did its job. Now, I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get these end caps off uh, before the display died, but if you look closely at the actual tubes, you can see the insides of some of these tubes here. And uh, you can see that they look pretty clean, dark copper. Um, there's none of that green patina that uh, usually is found inside these copper radiators. And uh, if you actually watch the video of me flushing this radiator out, you can see that there was a lot of green, yellow, or green, blue liquid that came out, that's basically the oxidation from the copper uh, that basically got washed out with the Mayhem's acid. So the expect my expectation was that there really wasn't gonna be much build up in here and uh, from the little bit that we can see here, uh, that seems to be the case, that this radiator was actually very well cleaned um, by the Mayhem Splits kit. Anyway, I hope you guys got something out of this video just like me. Uh, like I said, uh, I certainly had some preconceptions of what this radiator was, uh, you know, made out of or what it looked like on the inside or uh, how this thing was built, but I certainly did not expect it to look like this or, you know, look like this on the inside. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did. Um, if you guys want to see more computer builds or stuff like this, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing for future videos. I'll see you in the next one.